Hello everybody, this is the first video on probability and statistics in the series Exploratory Computing with Python. My name is Mark Bakker and I work at the Delft University of Technology. Today's topic is discrete random numbers. To generate random numbers, NumPy has a very nice sub-package called random and we'll start with importing that. Im import NumPy Dot random that's the name of the package as rnd we're going to call that package rnd so all the functions in the numpy.random package we can call with rnd dot and the name of the function let's also import numpy itself as and call it np to generate random numbers random integers there's a function called random integers rnd dot random underscore integers and if we open a parenthesis we get some help it asks for a low a high and a size um, and it says here re <coughs> return random integers between low and high inclusive which means that the high is included so if you say here we want to generate random numbers between 0 and 3 um, and we want to have 10 of them then it will draw a 0, or 1, or 2, or a 3, so 3 is included, and it will do that 10 times. So if you hit Shift Enter, you see it draws 10 random numbers between 0 and 3, where 3 is now included. Um, and if you run this again, it will draw a different set of 10 numbers. Every time I hit Shift Enter, we get different numbers. Sometimes we don't want that. Sometimes we want the same set of random numbers, which maybe doesn't make them all that random, but for that we can define the seed. If you say here rnd.seed, which is a function that specifies the seed number of the random number generator, it tells the random number generator where to start. So if you specify that, specify that for example, to do 55, we get this set of random numbers. If we run this again, we get the exact same set back. So if we don't specify this, I'm going to take this, oh, maybe I'll block it out. Um, then Python will, or the NumPy package, will generate its own seed in some clever way, and you'll get a different set every time. Let's try to do an experiment. Try to imagine we have a big bowl with 100 red balls, 100 blue balls, and 100 yellow balls. And we're going to give them a number. So say we call red is equal, is, uh, we call that number one, blue is number two, and yellow is number three. And we make this a markdown cell, cell type markdown. So we can run this. So we can remember what it is. So we, what we're going to do is we're going to generate random numbers, one, two, and three. We have a hundred balls of each, so they're probability is equal as long as we replace the ball once we've drawn it, right? So we take one ball out, put it back. And we're going to do that 10 times. So we do rnd.random integers, uh, start at 1, end at 3, including 3, and we're going to draw 10 balls. And we get this. So it's 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, and so, and so forth. So it is red, red, blue, blue, red, yellow, and so on. Um, and we want to count them. So we want to count how many red balls we have, for example. So we say this is our balls, is this. Um, and now we want to have all the balls that are equal to one. And if you do that, you might remember, you get an array back where it is fault. Well, let's also print balls so we can compare. Um, it is false where red is where the ball is not equal to one, and it is true where the ball is equal to one, and there's two of them, one here and one there. Now to count how many true, th true values you have in an array, um, you can simply sum it, because the way NumPy stores this, it assigns the value zero to false and the value one to true. So if we say np.sum of balls equals equal one, um, then we get the number of um, balls 
with the value 1 summed up, and let's see here's the array, so we have 1, 2, 3 times the value 1, and indeed the value we get back is 3. Uh, if you run this again, we get a different sequence of numbers. Now we apparently we only have two values, 1 and 1, we indeed have only two values. So if we now know the number of red balls, we, which is the balls met the value 1, we can also compute the probability of getting <coughs> a red ball. Um, by dividing it by the number of balls. And if we, do, if we divide it by 10, we get the value 0 back, right? Because this is an integer and that is an integer. So we really should make this a float. So we could have typed here 10.0. And then you get back, ah, the probability of getting a red ball apparently is 0.4. But if we run this again, it's 0.3. That's pretty close to what it should be. Uh, if you run this again, we get 0 because we don't, don't draw any red ball. And you see, if you only draw 10 balls from that ball, you don't get a very good estimate of uh, what the probability of a red ball is. So we have to do it many more times. Let's define that number here. Say we say n is equal to 100. So we draw values between 1 and 3, we draw n of them. We, um, we don't have to print this anymore because a very, we get a very large set. We, we calculate how many times um, the ball has value 1, which means red, and then we divide by the number of total balls we've drawn, the float of n, we have to make n into a float. And we get here, ah, the probability of getting a red ball is 0.38. If you run this again, it's 0 0.40. If you run this again, it's 0 0.29. So 100 balls is still not a very good number um, to get an accurate assessment of the probability of getting a red ball. If we do it a thousand times, oh, now we're getting a lot closer, right? Because the real value is 0 0.33. There's only three types of balls, and there's the same number of each. If we do it a thousand times, oh, now we're getting pretty close to 0.33. And again, well, you can do it even. 100,000 times. And you see, you get a pretty decent estimate of the probability of red balls. But you have to do a lot of draws to get the number correct or close to accurate. What now if we have a ball with 40 red balls and 60 blue balls? So if 40 red balls, right, that is the value of 1, and 60 blue balls, which has the value of 2. And let's make this in a markdown cell, cell type markdown, so we can remember what it was. Now we cannot use the random integers array to generate numbers because the probability of a red ball is different than the probability of a blue ball. So we have to do something else. And for that, we can use the function called choice. rnd.choice is part of the random package. If we open up the parentheses, it tells us it needs an array. Um, and you can draw a ran at random a number from that array. You can tell it how many size, how many values you want to draw. And you can even tell it whether you replace the number you've drawn before you draw the next value or not. So we first have to make this array that we're going to draw from. So we have um, a bowl which has uh, 100, val uh, 100 balls in it. So we make an array np.0 of 100. And the first 40 values we call 1, those are the red balls, and the next values from 40 on till the end, we can give the value 2, which are the blue balls. Now we can draw from that ball, we can draw 10 balls, and we can even say replace equals true. So every time we draw a ball, we put it back in. And here it, here it is. These are the values we've drawn from that ball. And we're going to do that a bunch of times, right? So we do again, and uh, so we draw 100 balls with replacement. Um, so here's the value n. And we can uh, store that in the variable balls. And we're going to count again how many red balls we have. When we know how many red balls we have, we can calculate the probability for a red ball, or at least the experimental probability for a red ball. So uh, we say the probability for red is equal to, just like before, np.sum of balls is equal to 1. 
and we divide that by the float of n. And then we print it. Probability of red, prob red. And we get, ah, the probability of red is 0.45. That's actually pretty close with 100 balls. Let's run it again. And we get, oh, we get exactly 0.4. That is luck. Let's see if we can have that luck again. Ah, no, 0.41. 0.43, you see if you do this a thousand times, we get closer. 0 0.425, 0 0.396, and so on. That's all I had for you today. I hope to see you next time.